dear friends and welcome. Today we shall talk about fucus. The main objectives of today's deliberation are number one, to know about the characteristic features of fucus. Number two, to know its occurrence and structure. Number three, to understand its reproduction patterns. Number four, to learn about its fertilization process. And finally, to know about the health benefits associated with fucus. To begin with, let me give a brief introduction. The Pheophyce or brown algae number about 1500 species, almost all of which occur in marine environments. These seaweeds are especially abundant in cool waters. Species of brown algae are macroscopic in size, including the giant kelps that can routinely achieve lengths of tens of meters. Brown algae have cell walls constructed of cellulose and polysaccharides known as allogenic acids. Some brown algae have relatively complex differentiated tissues including a whole fast that secures the organism to its substrate air bladders to aid with buoyancy, a supporting stalk or stipe, wide blades that provide the major surface for nutrient exchange and photosynthesis, and spore producing reproductive tissues. The specialized reproductive cells of brown algae are shed into the water and are motile, using two flagella to achieve locomotion. The food reserves of these algae are carbohydrate polymers known as laminarin. Their photosynthetic pigments are chlorophylls A and C, while the accessory pigments are keratinides and xanthophylls, including fucoxanthin, a brown colored pigment that gives these algae their characteristic dark color. Some examples of brown algae include the sargassum weed that is sargassum species which dominates the extensive floating ecosystem in the mid-Atlantic gyre known as the Sargosso Sea. Most brown seaweeds however occur on hard bottom coastal substrates especially in cooler waters. Examples of these include the rock weeds that is fucus species and escophyllum species. The kelpus which include laminaria species and the giant kelps, for example macrocystis species and nereocystis species. The giant kelps are by far the largest of the algae, achieving a length as great as 328 feet. The brown seaweeds in the genus Fucus are perennial with a broad thallus and can grow up to a meter in length. They commonly form dense stands in the intertidal zone of the most rocky temperate coasts. These seaweed communities play an important role in coastal ecosystems by providing substrate and shelter for many organisms as well as being a food source for others. Brown algae are named after their typical brownish, olive green color caused by fucoxanthin. This pigment is called after the alga fucus. With help of this pigment, brown algae can also utilize yellow and green light for assimilation. Now let us know its systematic position. Domain Eukaryota, class Pheophyce, order Fucales. Family Fucaceae, genus Fucus. Now coming to the characteristics of genus Fucus. Number one, the diploid plant body is differentiated into whole fast, stipe, and dichotomously branched ribbon like front. Number two, presence of floating device. Number three, complex internal structure of the plant body. Number four, absence of asexual reproduction by means of spores or similar other structures. Number five, 
sexual reproduction heterogamous. Number six, sex organs in the same or different concept tacles. Number seven, reduction division during the development of gametes in the antheridium and ugonium. Number eight, the development of eight eggs in each ugonium. Number nine, fertilization of ova outside the plant body in the open water. Number ten, absence of morphological alternation of generations. And finally, the presence of chromosomal alternation of generations. Now, let us talk about its occurrence. Fucus is a common marine alga containing a number of species that are widely distributed in the sea coasts of temperate and arctic regions. Most species are found attached to rocks between low and high tide marks and are commonly known as rock weeds. The species of fucus are recorded almost worldwide. They are dominant on the shores of the British Isles, the northeastern coast of North America and California. The distribution of seaweeds is commonly thought to mainly depend on abiotic factors. The most important factors being temperature and the availability of hard bottom substrate. Salinity also affects the range of many seaweed species. Coming to the structure of fucus. The plant body of fucus is leathery, parenchymatous, dichotomously or subpinately branched, ribbon-like frond with a distinct midrib. The thallus is perennial with an irregular or disc-shaped hole fast or hepteron by which it is attached to the substratum. The plants may be attached to completely or partly submerged rocks. Gas-filled nematocystes, that's air vesicles, are present in pairs in some species, one on either side of the midrib. The thallus bears cryptostomata and cecostomata, that is sterile surface cavities. The base of the thallus is stipe-like due to abrasion of the tissue lateral to the midrib. The swollen tips of the thalli, the receptacles, which lack midrib, are covered with small scattered pimple-like projections with small openings which lead into cavities known as conceptacles. The inflation of the receptacles is due to the production of a large amount of mucilage. The thallus is diploid, may be monoecious or dioecious, and is characterized by anatomical complexity. Anatomically, the thallus consists of outer limiting layer, compact fuvillier mucilaginous cortex, and a central medulla. Outer layer is composed of small cells containing abundant plastids and performs the function of assimilation. The medulla is the major part of the frond, which is composed of hypha-like elongated cells very similar to laminaria, probably performing the function of conduction of food material. The intercellular spaces are filled with mucilage. There is an orientation of organelles within the epidermal cells. They have an outer layer of allogenic acid vesicles with a basal nucleus and chloroplasts. The cap of allogenic acid vesicles may shield the chloroplasts and nucleus from intense illumination, especially at low tide when the plants are usually exposed. The organelles of the cortical cells are arranged just the reverse of the epidermal cells having an outer layer of chloroplasts. The chloroplasts of the medullary and hyphal cells are much reduced. Manitol is the form of photosynthate translocated. The growing apex acts as a sink, with the manitol translocated to the growing apex from the blades of the alga. Rudimentary sea plates are present in fucus. Growth in length of the thallus takes place by means of an apical cell 
which lies in the depression at the tip of each branch. The apical cell divides several times a year, resulting in the formation of a dichotomy or fork, with one arm or fork being longer than the other. Now, let us talk about its reproduction. First is asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is common for many land plants and algae. However, fucus species usually only reproduce sexually, although they are known to regenerate from whole fast. However, fucus radicans also reproduce asexually through adventitious branches formed in response to injuries or other stresses. When these fall off the adult thallus, they can form rhizoids, reattach to the seabed and grow into adult clones of the parental thallus. In the Baltic Sea, fucus vesiculosus also reproduce asexually to a certain extent. It has been suggested that the ability to reproduce asexually may be related to low salinity. Now, sexual reproduction. Fucus has a highly developed oogamous type of sexual reproduction. It exhibits a unique feature in its life cycle pattern. It has diplontic pattern of life cycle. Fucus possesses a remarkably elaborate diploid phase, which does not produce any sporangia or spores. Instead, it produces gametangia and gametes. Is rather very uncommon in algae. The gametes are born in Ugonia and Enthridia, which are produced in the conceptacles. To add to the reproductive strategy featured by this genus of brown algae, some species contain both Ugonia and Enthridia in a single conceptacle, for example, Fuca spirals, while others have distinct male and female conceptacles born on two different thalli, for example, Fucus vesiculosus. Within each conceptacle are many multicellular hairs, the paraphyses, which are mixed with enthridia and ugonia. Reduction division occurs during the development of gametes only and is comparable to that of the most advanced organisms. Hence, the enthryozoites and the eggs represent the haploid gametophytic phase in the life cycle of fucus. The gametophytic phase, instead of being distinctly organized, has thus been appreciably reduced to the gametes alone. There is only an alternation of chromosome numbers from diploid to haploid and back to diploid state, whereas the regular alternation of corresponding spore producing and gamete producing plants is lacking. Thus, there is no morphological alternation of generations in the life cycle of fucus. Now, let us talk about enthridia. The conceptacles for the male reproductive organs are lined enthridiophores, which are branched tree like structures and feature inflated terminal enthridia on their branches. The enthridia are usually formed on paraphyses. Enthridial parent cells are distinguished by dense cytoplasm with few vacuoles, a large central vacuole and chloroplasts with only a few thylakoids. Following meiosis which occurs during the first two divisions of the primary nucleus, the nuclei undergo four mitoses. Mature enthridia thus contain 64 nuclei each of which becomes incorporated into a spermatozoid. Cells in the receptacle release potassium and chloride ions into the mucilage of the conceptacle. This results in swelling of the mucilage that carries the enthridia or ugonia in the female conceptacle out of the conceptacle into the seawater. The wall of the enthridium is composed of two layers. At liberation, the outer wall ruptures, releasing the inner wall containing the spermatozoids and mucilage. This packet passes out of the conceptacle and into the sea. 
while the inner wall gelatinizes at one or both ends, releasing the spermatozoids. The spermatozoids are pear shaped, biflagellate, and biciliate. The cilia are laterally placed and are of unequal lengths. There is an eye spot consisting of a single layer of pigment globules inside a reduced chloroplast. The basal portion of the posterior flagellum is closely applied to the plasma lemma in the area of the eye spot. The anterior portion of the cell contains 13 microtubules that make up the proboscis, a structure that may function in the detection of the female sex attractant. The proboscis microtubules pass from the area of the basal bodies, extending themselves in one plane in front of the spermatozoid, and then pass beneath the plasma lemma to the posterior portion of the cell. Now, let us talk about Ugonia. These are the female reproductive structures that are produced from a single cell and born on a short stalk. These are lesser in number as compared to Enthridia. The ogonial cell undergoes three nuclear dugens, yielding eight haploid nuclei. The cytoplasm then cleaves into eight eggs, which gets enclosed in a cell wall of three layers. When the ogonium is mature, the outer layer, that is exochite, ruptures, releasing the packet of eggs still surrounded by the other two wall layers into the sea. In the sea, middle layer, that is mesochite, ruptures epically, slips backward and exposes the eggs within the innermost layer, that is endochite. The endochite rapidly dissolves, releasing the eggs. Now, let us talk about fertilization in fucus. These algae have a relatively simple life cycle and produce only one type of thallus which grows to a maximum size of 2 meters. Fertile cavities, the conceptacles containing the reproductive cells are immersed in the receptacles near the ends of the branch. After meiosis, gametes are produced and released. Fertilization follows and the zygote develops directly into the diploid plant. It may be considered to be analogous to the life cycle of the flowering plant, but in algae, the ugonia are released and fertilized in the sea. While in flowering plants, the ovules are fertilized while attached to the parent plant and then released as a seed. When mature, receptacles on the blade tips release gametes at low tide. Exposure to air causes desiccation and the gametes are squeezed onto the surface of the receptacle and are then washed off and mixed by the incoming tide. All eight eggs or ova when mature are liberated out in water. The enthridia are smaller and more numerous than the ugonia and are born in groups on short, much branched hairs. Like ugonium, anthereal wall is also composed of two to three layers. Numerous pear-shaped anthereozoids with two laterally inserted unequal flagella are produced in the anthereum. The female egg liberates a volatile hydrocarbon, fucoceratin, which attracts the male anthereozoids. These cluster around the egg and spin it. One penetrates the complex series of coats around the egg and fertilizes it, resulting in an oospore. The oospore forms a thin wall and at once divides to produce new fucus plant without undergoing a resting period. The lower cell growing into the whole fast and the upper the thallus. Now coming to the uses of fucus. The use of marine microalgae could be wide. Raw seaweed and seaweed food products in Asian countries have been consumed for centuries. The seaweed mineral content is higher than mineral level in terrestrial plants and animal products. Seaweeds can be transformed in different types of biofuel such as biogas, bioethanol and biodiesel. 
fucus can be used as a fertilizer. It can also be used as a bioabsorbent to remove heavy metals from the environment. Medicinal benefits of fucus have been evaluated for centuries. Polysaccharides found in seaweed make it attractive to the pharmaceutical industry. Stimulation of the thyroid gland as a treatment of problems like obesity and cellulite has been mentioned as the main benefit to medicine from the use of this plant. It is also known for its high iodine content. The high iodine content stimulates thyroid function which boosts metabolic processes and solves problems of lipid balance which may help to reduce weight. It is reported that fucus has anti-cancer potential, reduces blood sugar, works as an anticoagulant and used to treat high blood pressure. Bladder rack is rich in iodine, calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, sulfur, silicon, and iron and high in some B complex vitamins which could be beneficial as a food supplement. It contains moderate amounts of phosphorus, selenium, manganese and zinc and small amounts of vitamins A, C and E. It also contains anti-sterility vitamins as well as vitamin K. It is rich in algin and mannitol, carotene and zeaxanthin with traces of bromine. One of the other popular uses of bladder rack over the years has been as an anti-inflammatory substance. There are many valuable minerals found in bladder rack that can help to make the skin beautiful. But there are also powerful organic chemicals that can slow down the aging process. These antioxidants in fucus keep the skin looking healthy and young, reduce A spots and blemishes, and lessens the appearance of wrinkles. Apart from many positive traits associated with intake of algae, there are also concerns to take into account. It is suggested to avoid consumption of fucus in large quantities because excessive iodine intake can lead to many problems, may interfere in the absorption of iron, it can lead to heavy metal contamination which may be detrimental to human health. In some people, it can cause diarrhea. With this, we conclude our today's lecture. Hope you have understood it well. Thank you. Thank you.